Is it really a good idea to sell your property management company? Right now, there is a lot of anxiety in the industry about the accelerated rate of mergers and acquisitions. Today, we help you decide whether or not you should consolidate your property management company or go it alone. Eric Weatherington, the VP of Strategic Initiatives at Pure, joins us to discuss advantages of selling, and we will go over why you might want to stay independent. Welcome to the Bootstrappers podcast, where we help entrepreneurs scale their business with remote teams. I'm your host, Gwen Aspen, here with my co-host and spouse, Jeremy Aspen, and together we have helped hundreds of companies grow their business through remote professionals. If you want to achieve those big, hairy, audacious goals for your business, this is the podcast for you. So Jeremy, uh, let's talk about why people might want to stay independent with their property management company. Uh, okay, let's do it. I've got a whole bunch of reasons. I mean, actually, I'll say this. Um, we were going to, you know, we had a property management company for years. And though we had another company, this Aniquim, and I'll, if it weren't for Aniquim, I think I probably would have wanted to stay because, um, having your own property management company has a lot of advantages. One of them is, um, you're your own boss. You, you get to run your own company, do things the way that you want to. And let's be honest, a lot of people got into property management because they didn't work out in right. corporate. Yeah, well, they, they, they didn't like they it. It, wasn't ha- it didn't get them up in the morning. And it, a lot of the advantages is running your own show. And that's why you wanted to do it in the first place. Yeah. And there's another benefit in our industry, which is uh, related to prop, uh, to real estate. So having a bunch of property management signs up all over three, four, five hundred, a thousand units um, with your signs in your name popping up all over the place helps get your name out so that you can for your sales business. And that's to people that do sales pretty damn important. I, we never did that part of it, the sales side, but but you can get almost famous in your little local market with your name all over the place like that. Yeah, I think there um, there is this anxiety that people feel like, oh my God, I have to consolidate. Like there's no other option. But I, I think that that's overplayed a little bit. Um, 42% of landlords actually manage their own properties. And with the industry becoming more complex, with laws becoming more sophisticated, harder to follow, I think property management at all levels is gonna be a bigger business moving in the future. Um, additionally, if you are worried about the consolidating industry, Um, And and they do have some advantages that Eric's going to go over later in the show. But there are also ancillary businesses that you can grow into alongside your property management company, including having a maintenance company or, um, I mean, that's a big one, or doing even some development projects. Uh, We've had friends who've done very well creating their own uh, brand new apartment buildings. Um, There's the whole syndicate. We've done some shows on syndication in the past, and that's a way where if you put a big deal together, you can get investors and you can be very relevant within your space and not feel the pressure to consolidate. But what you do need to understand is that you're going to be in an environment where there are more sophisticated players and you don't want your success, the success of your company to depend on a larger company not coming to your market. Right. Yeah, yeah. I you, think you have to just be honest with yourself that the consolidation's coming, the sophistication's going to be there, and you're going to have to be better. You're going to have to um, provide some kind of advantage over those consolidated. Uh, step up your game. Well, and here's one thing that I think the consolidated outfits don't have they don't have the energies of an ownership in the local market, which, if you're at it on your own, you own the company, it's yours, you know that you know, you've got to get things done. It's not a nine to five job, it's your baby. And there's, an, there's another level of energy with that kind of a person in charge at a local market that you're not going to get in a, in a consolidated outfit. Um, but if you're that person, you're the kind of person that wants to not report to somebody, you want to run your own show, you better be prepared for these 
better, I would say, more organized, sophisticated organizations to come into the market and more effectively present, for instance, um, uh, uh, rental units to the people that are looking for rentals. I mean, you've and you've got to slip yourself into that by getting good software. Get a rent manager software that has leasing that goes right to Craigslist or Craigslist or, or whatever yeah. Zillow, whatever you're doing nowadays. Craigslist. What, yeah, that was a good one. That was hard too. But you've got to be able to slip into whatever is changing in the market by having and using the technology that's available because. Honestly, I know Rent Manager best. They have everything you need to compete against large organizations. The difference is the 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 more mom and pop shops, the the go at it owners don't deploy the software effectively. Well, they can, but some you know it's going to take that don't. it's going to yeah. take that extra effort. And so I think you know competition does make us better. It makes us grow. It uh, keeps us on our toes. It keeps us nimble. It keeps us changing. Um, and those are all good things. I mean, competition makes us better. And so if you think about it um, in that respect, uh, maybe you can be more successful than you otherwise could without these other pressures. So any other last thoughts about about why people we bring Eric on. might want to continue to Well, go I mean, on. so it, it it's a lifestyle business. You can kind of throttle up your activities. You can go to, you can travel. It, it, you, I mean, you, you do have the flexibility. If you do it yourself, you've got the flexibility of owning your own company. And, and for not Americans, reporting anyone. Not reporting anyone. And that's a really big deal. And I would not, I, I would, but for having another company to go to and work at and run, I, I'd be running my property management company because that would have been the best fit for me. Yeah, so, um, but on this show, you get to decide for yourself. So we'll bring in Eric and he can tell us all about why he decided to consolidate and what Pure offers uh, companies that are looking at that approach. Okay, so with that, we're gonna introduce Eric to the show. Great to have you, Eric. How are you doing today? Good, Gwen. How are you doing? Uh, really good. Uh, glad to talk to you about this topic of consolidation. I know I've been to several conferences lately, and there's just kind of a hubbub about consolidation. Some people are really stressed out about it because they're not sure if they should do it or not. And I think maybe we should just get started with your story. You owned your own property management company, New Heights Property Management in Charleston, South Carolina. What made you an early adopter to Pure? So great question. Uh, New Heights Property Management was affiliated with a large real estate brokerage firm here in South Carolina. And so as as me and my partners were discussing options and what we could do, we thought, you know, yeah, we could we could expand the company and and grow into other markets in South Carolina or buy companies in the southeast and and begin to expand. That was certainly something that we had discussed as as an option for us. But the thing about Pure that really uh, hit a chord with us was the technology and the understanding that, the belief that property management needed new technology. And and a lot of the technology that had been in property management had been, you know, old guard, old school type stuff. And it somebody needed to come in and really fundamentally change how technology was was viewed and was utilized in this space and so that is what attracted us to have you know further conversations you know after you know everybody calls and says oh we want to buy your company we want to buy your company great fine whatever you know we always take the call but you know no, nothing had ever really resonated with us in the past and this this resonated with us enough to say yeah we want to know more and and as we as we learned more and obviously i you know i know mike catalano and i know jennifer newton and, and jock mcneil and you know the, the the main folks there at at pure but then uh as you know as we got to meet other folks you know joe palveri and the the technology team and 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 whatnot and wherefore we realized yeah that we thought that they were really on to something that yeah uh, that we could jump in and be a part of okay and i i mean i think jeremy and i felt exactly the same way but i mean now it's gone on a while how long ago did you sell it was uh it's been what 14 months okay oh you're okay well, i wonder when we we sold about almost a year, a year ago. ago yeah um 
Okay, so now the people have seen the success. Can you just give us a little update on how many units and how many property management companies Pure has acquired over the last year? Do you have a- Yeah, we just announced uh, last week that we had reached our 50th acquisition. So we've, we've Amazing. bought 50 property management companies in the last you know 18 months. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's, it is. It's crazy. And I don't think any other <laughs> other company has has made that many acquisitions in such a short period of time. So it's a tribute to really the, the vision that Joe and Mike had as the mm-hmm. co-founders of the company in terms of you know what they wanted to do to really change the industry. Can you translate that into um, doors? Are you allowed to do that? Yeah, we've got about 22,000 doors under management now on uh, the SFR side. And we've got about uh, 19,000 HOA doors under management as well. Wow, okay. that's awesome. Okay, so now people have seen the momentum. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about what Pure is doing in the industry. So for the current people who are considering whether to sell or not, what are the real compelling reasons that you're seeing people pull the trigger and decide they want to uh, consolidate? And, well, and maybe we could refine it even a little bit more down to the ones that have had the most success. Like what what is it uh, in the recipe that made, them, made it the right choice for them, even after a couple months of being onboarded with you? guys like what do you guys want yeah i mean we're looking for good operators we're looking for good people you know in in good markets that um you know can help us grow and expand and and our vision was really bring together the the best of the property management industry to you know we say band together build together you know band together this great group of of property management folks and then build a property management company that was based on the best ideas from the best people and so really what we're doing now is we're in the final stages of kind of uh, well, I hope we're in the final stages of wrapping our bows around those best ideas and best practices that we're going to put out into the pure way and you know, begin implementing the pure way in all of our branches uh, that we have now. And then of course, all, you know, new companies as they come on board, will will get to align with that pure way as well. And, you know, that's, that's exciting because, you know, we're taking the best of the things that were being done in this market and the best of the things being done here and, and just kind of, you know, putting them together into our operating manual of how pure is going to be. So when people are looking to merge, what are the big things that they're looking for in the company that they're looking to maybe sell to? Uh, Technology? of course everybody says oh money 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 but it, mm-hmm. interestingly enough as as is in life you know if you if you you look at all the employee surveys and money is not the number one priority for most any employee in any job across you know the country or the world even money usually comes in around number four and when it comes to selling you know obviously money's important you want to maximize your investment the, the company that you're selling but a lot of folks are are telling us that they really they want to be part of something bigger Mm -hmm. they want to have bigger opportunities for themselves and for their teams they you know they they see that look i've i've had a great business in this community or this these couple of communities for a long period of time but it's it's time to do something else Mm -hmm. and and there's really nothing else for me to do if i don't join with somebody else who has a bigger vision and in deeper pockets and an ability to exercise that vision. And, and Eric, when I was at a mo- most recent conference, a systems conference, people were talking about some of the new advantages of Pure because of your size. You've got technology discounts that you just can't, a small operator can't compare with. There's right. a lot of coaching involved in your system. There's a lot of like mentorship. And then also you can really benchmark but how you're doing with other operators, I think that's a big one. And I know for Jeremy and I, when we were considering options, you guys have great benefits for the team members that typically people can't offer on their own. I mean, would you say those are the big size consolidation advantages? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's interesting, Glenn, when you look at when you look at the companies that we've acquired over the, the last 18 months, if you compare their average rent in that business to the average rent in their market, the companies that have 85% or higher average rent compared to their marketplace are doing pretty well financially. The companies that are not 
doing that that are not at that 85% range in terms of average rent compared to their market are not doing as well. Ah. So so it's, you know, so a, an operator who's, you know, not part of pure, I mean anybody can look at that and say what kind of properties am I bringing into my portfolio? You know, mm-hmm. when somebody says I want, you know, XYZ to manage my my property, how does that how does the rent in that property compare to the average in your marketplace? Well, and if you you put together a portfolio that is less than 85% of the average rent in your marketplace, it's going to be really hard for you as a property management operator to be very profitable. Well, and that's where a lot of those companies, I think property management companies start to dig themselves a hole because they count doors. They're counting doors. They're not talking that average rent. So you can put together and actually probably relatively easily put together a C and D portfolio of thousands of units. But oh my God, the work that you have to put into making something like that work. The, what, the what touch ends, points are so high for those. The touch days. points are enormously high. And yeah. really what you're doing is you're putting sweat equity into everything. You can't build a you can't build systems on top of something that's so manual because you're talking to people who don't right. earn much money that might not be working during the day. They're calling about stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you end up having to address it in a nice professional way. You may as well have that nice professionalism um, engage a market where it, 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 it brings in more money. So you can charge, because our, our industry's per is a percentage base. So maybe that's a takeaway. Don't do C, D class portfolios. They suck. Well, and I learned this the hard way, you know, back years ago when we, you know, if it was a, if it was a property that somebody paid rent for, we'd manage it, you know? Right. Yeah, uh, we were the and, same way when we started. And we would do it. And and it just kept, you know, we, and then all of a sudden I started comparing the amount of work, the amount of phone calls, the amount of maintenance you know, mm-hmm. requests, the amount of unpaid, you know, how many times uh, every year did unpaid rent become an issue? And, and, and it was like, we were doing three times the amount of work for these properties oh, yeah. that were on the lower end and you're making half of the money. Yep. No. But and I, I see this as an advantage of Pure is that you have this data. So um, you're able to analyze data in a really sophisticated way and drive your operators to make better choices. Do you think that that's another advantage of Absolutely. G- going with Absolutely. Pure? Well, and, and lest it sound like this is an advertisement for Pure, it, you know, Take that information alone, just having heard what you had heard on this show, you can run with that. Like, right. have the confidence, if it's your own company or one that you're someday going to sell to one of these consolidators, um, have the confidence in your abilities or have the abilities and then confide in your abilities enough to charge what you deserve to make by, ha- in large part, by having the types of properties that you can make a living with. Right. Um, okay, so one other thing uh, before we end uh, this exciting episode, because I do think this is such a this is a topic that is super interesting to everybody uh, in the industry. But our market is changing a lot. Our industry is changing a lot. What do you think is driving those changes primarily? Well, I think technology is is one thing, and you know I'm going to be talking about this in uh, in a. A session I'm giving at the NARPM National Convention in a couple of weeks is just how as as we begin to experience more and more technology changes around us, we expect more from other people that we talk to. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean nowadays you can take your phone and you can order a pizza and you can see your pizza, you know, <laughs> getting made. Then you see it move to the oven and then you see it move to the box and then you see it move to the delivery driver. And then all of a sudden the delivery driver, you know, shows up on your door. And as people experience that type of change in technology, they say, oh, that's really cool. Well, I want to see that somewhere, you know, everywhere else in my life, too. Mm -hmm. And property management, we just haven't caught up. And so. You know, you think about the banking industry. I mean, years ago, you if you wanted to, you know, find out what the balance was of your savings account, you had to log into the bank, 
that we, where your savings account was at and check that out. Well, if you had a checking account in another bank and you wanted to see the balance on that, you had to go to their website, log in and check on that. And then you wanted to see what the balance was of your 401k statement. You know, you had to go into your, you know, your 401k, you know, provider and figure that out. Well, now you can go into one place like a personal capital or mint or any of these other things and you can go into one place and you can see all of that information from all of those different resources or sources and property management right now is still the same. Mm-hmm. You know, you have, we're still very desegregated and and so we've got to get to a point where we bring things together, we bring this tech, this data together so that people can look at their investment property as an asset and manage it as such, not just how much rent am I getting, but what's my NOI? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what is, you know, I, I wanna be able to look at my investment rental properties, no matter where they are in the country and see you know, what has been my return for the last three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, you know, and really see what that NOI is, just like you do your stock market account. Exactly. Right? We've always said that um, for our property management company, that it should be as easy as looking at your TD Ameritrade fund and well, being yeah. like, oh, I'm still making money. Well, and, and, and we haven't made it traditionally in the industry that easy for our investors. And I guess exactly. this is the change that is happening in the industry and why so many tech companies are interested finally in our mom and pop business or uh, well, and a lot of that stuff though can just be done in having good accurate books like i remember for you all i ever did was have accurate books and i could tell you very immediately uh, within a couple of days how much money was in the bank what the value of my right. properties is i mean if you keep up on your books you can also have that information but what i found was one of our banks huntington i could type in the address and it would pull up the valuation of the property based on whatever the hell miracle yeah. they're connected to. But yeah. it's cool, because you can see, this is my these are my investment accounts, these are my cash accounts, and here's my houses? Yep. Weird. And it's all on the one page, it's super, so cool. Anyway. Well, yep. this is so great, Eric, to have you on the show. It's so impressive what Pure has done. I mean, in such a short amount of time, very exciting. And um, I mean, we'll look forward to hearing more from you at all the various conventions this year, including NARPM Nationals, about the changes in the industry and how uh, people need to maybe talk about the consolidation and whether it's for them or not. So really appreciate your time. Great, good to spend time with you, Gwen and Jeremy. Always appreciate talking to you guys and look forward to seeing you soon. We yes, will see you see soon. You. Thanks, Eric. Thank you for joining us on today's podcast. If you're an entrepreneur who wants to scale your business, subscribe now. If you want to solve labor challenges, scale your business faster than your competition, alleviate back office support struggles, operational challenges, and find the most talented workforce, then Anaquim is what you need today. We'll take our support beyond this podcast to focus on your company's needs with a specific and proven way to overcome challenges and grow your bottom line fast. Contact us directly so we can get started today. Our emails are in the show notes and our website is aniquim.net.